In every game, you can count on players finding, using, and abusing the most overpowered weapons and abilities, and Battlefront 2 is no different. The current version of Star Wars Battlefront 2 is far different than the version that released back in November, and a lot of things that were once considered underpowered have totally flipped. This is not a call to nerf anything in particular. Honestly, balance-wise, this game is better today than it was on release, but today we'll go over the top 5 overpowered annoying things in Star Wars Battlefront 2. While we go over these, let me know what you find overpowered in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and how excited you are about the new Clone Wars season. I still can't believe it. Now I'm trying to shorten the intro, I hear you that they're long, but this next part is important. One of our fellow Greenie Weenie's wives was recently diagnosed with cancer. This can be very hard on a family, and tough to go through. If anyone is interested in helping, there's a link to the GoFundMe in the description down below. So let's begin. The easiest and probably most annoying things to see are speeders. Costing the low low cost of 200 battle points, they are on the map right away, and if you want to troll a team on Endor or Starkiller, just use your battle command right at the start of the match, respawn, and get in that speeder. Speeders, like all vehicles, for some reason, get a ton of battle points with each kill. And with speeders being so cheap, you can just play a speeder the whole match, no matter how bad you are with them. You don't even need to know how to aim or shoot in speeders, since as we all know, they're only good for running troopers down like roadkill. That's the most annoying part of the whole speeder thing. All they do is run you over, then they die, and then automatically respawn as yet another annoying speeder. There's no downside of doing this since it only takes one kill with the speeder to pay for itself and anything over that is a gain. Although speeders are super easy to kill and take down, they're just so cheap which makes them so easy for noobs to abuse. Second, we have the new Ion Torpedo. This is one of the things that have gone from being underpowered and never used to overpowered and completely changed the balance on some maps like Hoth. The Ion Torpedo now has three shots instead of one, which is great, and it can take down an interceptor in one shot, speeders and fighters in two, and bombers in three if all the rounds hit. This is crazy and has completely gotten rid of the air support on Hoth for both sides. Trying to tie up the AT-AT with the speeder? Nope. Trying to do a straight front on troopers? Not today. The, the Ion Torpedo makes super quick work of ground vehicles as well. ATSTs and the droid tank take a little more than three shots to drop unless one gets a critical hit which does a crazy amount of damage. And the Ion Torpedo has also made it a lot easier to win on the escort maps for the defensive team. They're amazing when fired at walkers and give you a crap ton of battle points since you're playing the objective. I've gone from almost never seeing Kashyyyk or Hoth end on phase one to occasionally seeing it happen and anytime we can get off Kashyyyk quicker, the better off it is. Sticking with the theme of vehicles, let's talk about the ATST. If this vehicle is left unchecked, or someone doesn't get the ion torpedo out, this vehicle can flip an entire game on Yavin, Tatooine, or Crate. It gets a ton of battle points, so it's easy to replenish the 2,500 you spent on it, and then some. It has a very high health pool if you don't let anyone get behind you, and is super easy to massacre with. While it is probably the weakest on this list, it does have one thing going for it that makes it extremely overpowered, and it's on Hoth. Right now, there's a bug where you can get the ATSTs in the right hand hanger on Hoth and it makes it so easy to take that point. They're not able to get over to the left hand one and they're not able to proceed to phase three, but if your team attacks the left one first, there's no reason you should ever not get the right hand point on phase two Hoth as Empire anymore. You gotta love bugs with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Fourth, we have team balancing. For some reason, this game tends to put the worst players all on one team, taking away any chance of that team winning. And when you get on these teams, it takes away your willingness to play, since getting steamrolled is not fun for anyone. And if you're doing the steamrolling, it's fun for a while, but starts to get boring when you don't have a challenge. This really isn't anything the players are using or abusing, unless of course you count staying with your team the whole time until you sign off for the day, but it's just something that ruins this game to be honest and really needs to be looked at, uh, is the team balancing, and there's really no reason a game coming out in 2017 should not have a skill-based matchmaking style setup. Finally, we have the officer class on a whole. I'm starting to believe that whichever team has the most amount of officers is going to win in that round, regardless of skill or ability. Every officer brings a turret, and the turret can lock on and fire on a player, taking zero skill or ability. And if you have 10 officers on a team of 20, that's 10 extra guns you brought to the table. A small group of officers working together can pretty much flash grenade non-stop, 
as long as they keep recharging each other and alternating the recharges. It's crazy, and it's no surprise that the majority of lobbies are still officers. The officer class still gets the most amount of battle points, can have the most amount of health, and still has the strongest overall weapons in the game. There have been some nerfs to kind of bring them more in line, but the way the class works and is designed, there's no way to reduce the battle point gain without completely resigning the class, which we won't see happen, and completely revamping the weapons, which again, won't happen. And the battle point gain, you can still get 500 right at the start of the match with just one recharge ability. If you want to be the top 5, you play officer. If you want to be a hero, you play officer. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and be sure to give it a like if you haven't already. In the comments, let me know what you think is the most overpowered thing in the game. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that button and then hit that bell so YouTube may possibly, I don't know, notify you when a video comes out. Apparently, it doesn't work for everyone, but the option's there and I would appreciate all your support. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I thank you for your time, and I'll see you in-game.